started with my uh, project today. Uh, so I am working on a uh, really curvy bomb dresser uh, today. And um, it's, uh, it's a little bit challenging trying to do uh, something that's a bit curvy with transfers and um, decor weave. So I just wanted to show you uh, kind of how like I do it in order to get it over uh, curved surfaces flat. And then I'll be using uh, some of the Would You Bend moldings too. So I'm adding some of the Would You Bend moldings because this doesn't have enough uh, glam to it. Just kidding. It's got a lot of trim. There's a lot of trim on this uh, in the hardware. There's a ton of hardware. Um, you might have seen the, move, the video where I was taking off all the hardware. So I have all the hardware removed. Um, I painted the dresser and now I'm adding the transfers and the, um, the extra Would You Bend moldings all together on the face of the dresser. So it's kind of um, a bit tricky because I have to go around the uh, original hardware so that it doesn't, it can still go on. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but I think I can handle that. So uh, yeah, anyways, getting started. Here is the drawers. I took them off because it's easier for me to uh, demo when it's um, when it is on the ground. And I really don't want to mess up this one, so you're gonna have to watch it like this. Like this. So here is the drawer. Um, I'm using the tulip fields transfer. It's, uh, it's this one, so it's the bright uh, transfer here. It's got uh, a lot of the vibrant uh, flowers and things like that, so this is kind of what I'm working on. And then I'm adding the Would You Bend moldings too. This is like a long scroll one that I've already painted. Sorry, there's a little thing on it. Um, so I'm adding this too. My goal is to kind of make it like a frame because I um, the transfer is pretty large as it is, but I'm not sure how I feel about it, um, you know, kind of going like that. I could always add trim around the whole dresser too uh, with the wedgie bend, but don't know if I like that idea, so I, I was, I'm planning on using the scrolls instead, uh, but I have to go around the hardware here, so it's going to take a little bit of um, arranging to do that with the hardware uh, like this, so I think I'm just going to kind of curve it, like here, um, that way, with these moldings. Kind of like that and then I have this is one of the original hardware pieces it goes on the bottom here um, it's detached because I do not want to pin them back on quite yet so this is uh, part of the original sorry no you can't see that this is a uh, part of the original is this one right here Now you can see better. So this is part of the original hardware. On the bottom, um, I wanted it uh, just to kind of avoid it as well. So I'll be filling in um, the bottom part with paint, which is fine. Um, I've done that before. And then I wanted the scrolls, but then I have the hardware here. So that one is this. So this is the other hardware. I'm trying to visualize it as it would be so I don't um, run into problems when I'm actually nailing these back on and they're not working, so it's, it's kind of like that. So that's kind of how it's going to look here, and then I want it to curve, but I need it to avoid the, uh, the dresser part. And uh, I also need it to, um, to uh, look even too. So I did get so the, the top part here I'm going to have to trim too. So it's a little bit complicated right now. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, soften these Would You Bend scroll ones first. That will help me be able to kind of draw uh, with the transfer on here uh, once I figure out what I'm doing. So I'm going to melt 
or not melt it, like, uh, you know, heat it up with my heat gun. So here's my heat gun. Um, you soften the moldings with the, with the heat gun and then you can uh, make them flexible. Uh, so I need it to do that right now so I can kind of measure um, how it's going to look. Uh, I kind of made this hard on myself, but not really surprising. So I'm just going to... Uh, melt, uh, or not melt, uh, soften, <laughs> soften this. So I just, uh, just going to do it on the back because I have the front painted. I'll do it a bit more intense heat. Right here. Just trying to soften the wood fibers. longer. It's just a larger scroll so it's kind of not, uh, see it's, it's melt, it's uh, softening, it's just a, it's kind of a big um, molding so it takes a little bit to get it to soften. So it's starting to get bendy, as you can see. But I want to make sure it's uh, nice and flexible so it doesn't snap. Um, just because of how curvy this dresser is, I just have to get around the curves to see how I want to do it. <clears throat> Uh, see it's flexible now, but I need to make sure it's uh, extremely flexible, like rubber. The parts with the, that are uh, wider, of course, take longer. And then, so it's getting there. I'm just being extra cautious. Um, I need it extremely floppy, uh, has to be floppy. Alright, so you can see it's nice and flexy now, uh, and I need to kind of map out a template of what it is I'm doing. Alright, this hardware is just going to be the problem. So. so it's going to be to this side. I was kind of originally planning going around this way, 
some hmm, decisions. Going around this way. I don't know, what do you guys think? I just don't want it to hit the, uh, the other hardware. There's a lot of hardware. This thing is full of hardware. So I'm thinking, hmm. I'll get it mapped out like this, possibly. I don't know. Sorry, I have to. I was trying to figure out how I want to do this, but you know, it's just hard to see it when you don't have it totally on here. And I don't, uh, I don't think I can, I can't make that go in between. That just won't work. So, sorry, bear with me. I'm whoa, <laughs> slippy, slippy slide. want to be able to see more of the tulip fields. Um, that was my intention. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to frame it around here and then I'm going to cut this part off um, on the edge uh, and then um, I will uh, kind of melt that and uh, get it to where I want it to be. I'm just looking at the positioning of my dresser and um, I can do that, but I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to actually pin that on there, and then I will do it this way. Okay, so that's how I'm going to do it. I think I may as well. I should glue it on. I'm really nervous about this. Okay, so this is a uh, this is one of the sides for the tulip fields. And I'm going to the other side of it. So this is the other side of it, as you can see, with that one. I'm just going to try to... I'm going to cut off the top here, and uh, so I don't have to mess around with uh, too much. on the backing. We have to do that. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of tape this on the backing to hold it down as, as well. Um, just make it easier for me to get this situated. Just going to tape it on here. Tape it on here. There we go. And the other edge. I don't want this to fall off because this is a uh, this transfer is sticky on the metallic. If I if it slips in, I pretty much botched it up. This is kind of. what I was wanting right here. Come on now. Like this. And then this guy. Like this. But I cannot see, so that's kind of that's kind of what I was planning on doing. But I see now that um, it's going to be difficult for me to even measure this because I can't see, so my original plans are not good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and glue this on. I'm not going to mess around with it. I'm just going to go glue this on first and get it stuck so I can uh, actually make this work. So I'm just going to
it goes back to being uh, rigid within a few minutes, so make sure you're doing it faster than I am. Alright, I think that's flexy enough. It's not, uh, my thing's not that bad, so. It's really just the middle that's, uh, gonna be difficult. The ends aren't gonna be too much, but... And then I'll go ahead and glue this on and get it done. Okay. Right, I'm going to, first I'm going to, uh, oh, I should have brought my pins actually, just pin it down, but whatever. Uh, okay, so I'm going to kind of try to lay it flat the way I want it to be up here. I'm gonna try to lay it flat the way I want it to be and just kind of hold it down so like when it uh, cools down a little bit it'll still be nice and flush with it. And I'm gonna grab my glue. I'm using a tight bond so this is the glue I'm using for um, the moldings and I like it because it's quick, dries clear, and it's fast. <laughs> so fast is good. Fast is good, but it, it also means you have to really work fast. So I'm going to try to do this really quick um, and not mess up on my live. Make sure you use wood glue with these because it's wood fibers. Um, it works better with the wood glue. With the resin, I typically, oh shoot, it's not going to go that high. What am I doing? Um, it's fine, I can wipe it off. But uh, with the the resin mold, I use E6000 because it's, you know, like plastic. It's a bit different. But uh, with these ones, um, I want to try to get it. Uh, going to press this a little bit. Um, I do have tape. I can tape it down. But... but I'm just going to press it. It works. It works pretty fast. So, but I'm going to get the tape. Actually, I should clamp this. That would be much better. I'll use my clamps. I'm going to grab my clamps like right over there. I'm going to clamp this down. Ouch. I have my clamps. I wasn't really expecting to clamp this down. I should have known. So I have my, these are like cheap clamps you can get anywhere and uh, they will work really well. Um, however, I don't want this to get on the top of this. So, I'm going to Tape, tape, tape. Oh, that's not going to work like the way I wanted it to shoot. Oh well, it's fine. Not the end of the world, but it's kind of annoying. I'm using the yellow frog tape. It's the, the more delicate one. Um, tr so, trying to prevent my paint from pulling up, but um, we'll see if that works. 
really want to try to avoid this transfer because it will peel up if I'm not careful. I haven't sealed it yet um, because I'm going to be using acrylics on top. didn't want to seal it to make it too glossy and uh, kind of ruin my plans, so I uh, tried to not do that. It's okay if it's not flush, um, you can always heat it back up and get it to come back down. Yeah, it's at the limit there. Heat. Okay, just let the tight blonde work its magic. And then I will do the other side and give this a little bit of time to kind of get down there. Can I plant you? Yes, I can. Down with my dirty toe. Okay. Yeah, okay. Just, as long as it doesn't shift. Sometimes this shifts when I clamp it, and that's not good. So um, I might have to heat it back up and get it. That's okay. I'll deal with that later. This yellow tape um, is delicate, but it's not not very doesn't stick very well. Too delicate. I'm gonna do the other side now. Sorry, this is gonna be one of those lives where it's uh, complicated. this a little bit. It's bothering me that it's not staying. Um, should weigh it down, but it's fine. Curved furniture is not easy. It is a pain. Okay, now, now it's sticking. Okay, the, the glue is now working, finally. Or like drying, I mean. It's, it's was working, but now it's staying, so that's all I need. the more intense heat. Get it to be locked on. Get it to It's taking a little bit. It's also cold here. I mean, it's, it's actually nice today. It's 50 degrees. <laughs> if you can call that nice, it's 50. So, uh, probably now 45 is uh, evening approaches, but that also definitely uh, affects the time of getting these to bend, of course. But I just really wanted to show you how these moldings work. Because um, I know people are going to ask me, and it's better if I just show you how to use them. Um, probably should have demoed on a flat piece, but... 
I'll do it on the more complicated one. Alright, great. Alright, it's got to the flexibility that I need. I should have pinned this down, sorry. I'm not thinking too clearly. What I was doing. So, here, here, here. Alright. So, this way it has to go. Where are you, pet friend? There we go. Okay. Alright, let's get this glued. Dang it, now it's, now it's oozing out crud. I'm not wanting it to ooze out like that because now it's gonna... Oh my goodness. Whatever, it's fine. I'm just holding this down a little bit because um, it will harden and stay. Okay. Usually on my own, I'm not. Oh, shit. Um, oh, God, I can't see. Okay, that's right. I need to have this all. That's a thing. Okay, I saved it in time. Uh, I forgot to uh, make sure I was holding it where uh, the other one was. Sorry about that. I was trying to make this even and it um, wasn't really working. Stay, maybe. I'm just gonna take that one down real quick and then get to the transfer part. off now because it's uh it's now dry it should be uh, yeah because it's some brewing there but whatever i need to get the measurements on the rest of this so i'm going to go ahead and do this i need to mark it um a little bit Here, flush along here, 
it is one that you have to connect, which is fine. Um, it just makes it a little bit more complicated that way. Uh, I'm actually going to take the top and then I'm going to slowly go down. And it will be better if I do it that way. And then kind of like press down and cut around it, if that makes sense. So that's what I'm going to do first uh, with this part. This is kind of more of the intermediate stuff I teach in my master classes, um, but it's also kind of long. Okay, so I'm going to go down and then try to line it up. I have drawers down and I don't know if it gets this way. So I'm going to line it up right here and go from top to bottom. Um, actually, I'm going to pull this drawer away so I can make it easier on myself. And then we'll line it up and then I'll trim it. Hopefully it will go as I planned. That. So I'm just going to kind of, you know, unroll this, unfurl it a bit down and then line it up from the top edge right here. This is the most important part for me. I need it to line up perfectly. And then I can go down like that. So I'm going to go ahead and rub it. Uh, so I get a glove. Do it. So I'm going to go ahead and rub it down. It, um, transfers always like metallic paint. Uh, I think they like acrylic based paints more. Um, they stick on better to uh, acrylic based paints, in, in my experience anyways. Um, they don't really like chalky paints, uh, so that's why it's recommended to seal on the instructions. However, you should always seal first anyways uh, with the HP, the Hocus Pocus transfers, um, so that you have the application correct. Use my razor blade, got a nice sharp one. Take it that way. Okay. Gonna get this edge right here. We'll end up having to add this on the other side when I put the drawers back in. Okay. And I'm going to trim the bottom. This side was a lot easier. When I was doing the middle, it was <laughs> it was awful. It was not pretty, so I'm, kind of, I'm glad I didn't show you that stuff. <laughs> um, it would have been embarrassing. Okay, maybe not. Oh, okay. All right, and I'm going to let this guy roll back up, and then I'm going to do this part, and then move on to the bottom one um, as I go. So kind of just uh, get it around. Edges, especially. All right, so I'll just get this lined up. Just got to get it around these curves. It's kind of hard to press completely down on it because it's so curvy. I've never worked on a, um, a dresser list with these many curves. It's, um, it's been interesting to learn how to, how to do it, uh, but I think it's going to be worth it in the end. We'll see.
transfer. It was hard um, deciding on what color to use. I kind of debated, um, I thought orange maybe, and then I wanted to do red, but I already did a red piece with the bomb dresser, so I wanted to do something different. Um, it was just kind of going back and forth. thought about purple, of course, but I've already done quite a few purple things. Um, so I decided on the uh, Modern Masters Rose Metallic, and then there's a bit of sunlit brass on the bottom. Did, uh, I wanted to do kind of like an ombre sort of thingy uh, effect. So a little bit of the champagne kind of color. And maybe I'll add bread, I don't know. Who knows? It's just easier to visualize and decide once you, once you have the transfer on and everything. So, done with the top one, which was the easier part, right here. Alright, I'm not to end up doing this, but I don't know if I should show you that. I might just do the other top part and then call it good, um, because this is going to be uh, a little bit challenging for me, and I don't... Yeah. So, that part's going to be challenging. So, I'm just going to do the other top part. Um, instead because I don't want to mess up and it's, um, it's really hard to demo sometimes with the, with these more complicated ones so I, I just don't want to mess up. So I'll just do the other top part. bottom like the other one. George kind of slide this and get it aligned like that. Okay, so I'm going to get it aligned like this first. The lining is usually the 
trickier part with these. Sometimes I slip a little bit and then it doesn't get it nice and even. Alright, so I'm just going to fold it back up like that. And then I'll save that for um, doing the bottom part. As you can see. And then I'll just press this down. Oh, I'll have to do that on the other drawer too. decided what to do on the top. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do glass bead gel. actually has, um, there's another two drawers on the top. This is the bottom half and I was um, trying to decide what to do on the top part. I thought it would make it interesting but um, at the same time not too, uh, not too much. Like, Not so that it kind of detracts from the bottom part, which is what I want you to focus on, um, is the bottom part. So I was trying to decide what to do um, with it, but now I think I'm going to do a script stencil, actually. I think that will look pretty. So now I figured that out. Do a script stencil. probably bring the script over this too so that it um, looks a bit cohesive that way um, but we'll see now I have to figure out what to do with the sides that's giving me a bit of trouble I don't know the sides are very um, plain so there's a lot of open area and I can pretty much do whatever I want on the sides but at the same time um, I want it to tie into this so figured out what to do besides the top of the sides. I'm going to do the rose, uh, rose, uh, swag, is that what they call it? Swag. I'm not sure. I'll show you once I get this on. But that was what I was deciding on the, on the sides of this drawer, uh, dresser. It's actually a pretty big dresser. It's really bulky. Right here that are really hard to get it left on. Just a slow 
rope. I'm going to do the bottom half on my own because um, I don't want to keep you for like two hours trying to do the bottom. That would be more complicated. So just the top half. just wanted to show you really how to get around these slopes and stuff because um, it is challenging to do that, especially with um, weaves and transfers. They kind of, you know, like overlap and things like that. Uh, but this is what I was talking about. I'm going to be doing this on the sides. This uh, rose, uh, um, what do you call it? But anyway, this really pretty rose uh, molding on the sides um, of the dresser, the top part. Of course, I'm going to do gold. Um, what I do is I put primer on first. So I spray it with primer first and then I spray the gold on top of it. So I have these two, the little uh, escutcheons, you know, the fake keyholes, I'm going to do that too. Um, this one doesn't have locks, but it's always cool to just, I, I like the keyholes, so I was going to put like little keyholes along all four of the drawers to make it extra fancy, because this piece is pretty fancy, um, and just add a little bit more detail to it. Uh, I kind of just go all the way with this. It's gonna be Brock all the way with that one. That's pretty much it um, for my demo. Thanks for your patience in the beginning as I was trying to get this thing, this one down. Um, I'm going to actually have to soften it again and clamp it down, but you know, it's raised is actually good. I just thought about this. I can slip the transfer under it. I didn't think of that before, so I can actually, you know, just slip this under as I align it. See? So, you know, I'm going to slip under the hair and then I can do the mark. So it's actually turned out, um, turned out good. It's a good thing I kind of messed up like that. Um, but that's pretty much it for me. Okay. Let's go back up. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I'm sorry it was kind of complicated in the beginning, but um, I appreciate your patience as you went with me um, trying to figure out the side part, which uh, I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. And then um, I'm going to be putting the hardware back on and it will be pretty much complete within a few days. Um, going to do the script stencil. There's a really pretty one from Posh Chalk, so I'll use the Posh Chalk one. Um, uh, Finnebear has um, one too, it's, it's slightly smaller, so depending on how flexible the stencil is, um, I'll choose which one to use because I need to bend it over to make it, you know, go over, and that's going to be a bit complicated too, so I might have to use a smaller one to go, you know, a little bit space by space. So that's going to be another video that I, I plan on doing um, and showing. Uh, for my masterclass part, I'll, I'll still show you a peek on how it looks. Um, but that's going to be in the masterclass intermediate. Uh, and then I have another fun project planned. I'm going to be doing my uh, mermaid foyer table look. So I found another foyer table that's ornate. Um, this is probably the fifth one that I found. It's slight, it's similar, you know, slightly different, but it's got the shells and everything. So I've been prepping that table and I'm going to do my color shift stuff and waxes and recreate the mermaid finish um, similar but slightly different. Uh, I don't really like to repeat my design so it's going to be very similar, slightly different. Um, I'm doing that as a workshop so you'll be able to uh, attend the workshop if you if you want to. So that's kind of like another project that I'm doing. Um, but yeah, so thanks for joining me this Sunday again. I'll see you next Sunday um, with another Hocus Pocus project. Uh, also check out the Would You Bend Moldings. They are 
really I'm really impressed with them I love them so and how big they are too like the, they're big so it, it kind of works with uh, furniture really well you don't have to do little mold by mold by mold you can just get a big one you know and it'll cover a large surface area so in fact you don't need many of these moldings but I think they're cool so check them out and um, I'll see you again uh, next Sunday <laughs>